Hello! Welcome to ResoCoder! In this video you're going to learn how to easily prank someone by duplicating files so they will run out of storage. And the best thing is that your victim is not even gonna notice, well, until it's too late. You don't need to have any knowledge of C-sharp for this tutorial, however you're surely gonna benefit from it, so check out my C-sharp course if you are interested. Keep in mind that you are pranking at your own risk, so prank only people who can take the joke. And now without further ado, let's get right to it! First up, you wanna create a folder, ideally hide it somewhere where your victim is not gonna be able to find it easily, and I've already created that folder and I've called it prank folder right here. Now pick some file, ideally a pretty big one, and place it inside that folder. And I've done that as well. It can be any type of file, it doesn't really matter. Then you wanna pick a program which your victim opens up a few times a day, because we're gonna create a fake program, and when the victim opens it, it starts the real program and also duplicates files. I'm gonna choose Google Chrome, then open up Visual Studio and check out my tutorial if you wanna know how to get it and how to customize it. Make a new project, so go to File, New, Project, it's gonna be a console app and the name of the program should be like the name of the program that you've chosen, so in this tutorial I'm gonna name it Chrome. And click on OK. Next you can delete all of this and we are gonna add two using statements using system.io and also using system diagnostics. Then copy the path at which the program of your choice is located. If you have a shortcut for the program you can just click on the shortcut, click on properties and now this is the path. So just copy it and in the main method write process.start and now paste the path in here and as you can see we have errors over here that's because we need to put an at sign before this string which makes it a verbatim string you don't need to worry why we need to do that for now but if you're curious it's because of these backslashes because these are supposed to be used with escape characters but that is for another tutorial. Next up we are gonna create a random number generator which is gonna generate us random file names. So you're gonna write random generator equals new random. Awesome! Then you wanna copy the name of the file you want to be duplicating and create a string containing that file name. So as you can see our file is just called file.zip so we are going to create a new string, we are going to name it file and it's going to be equal to file.zip. Also create a string containing the directory in which you've put your file. You can get this by going to the explorer, clicking on here and copying it and then create another string directory and paste it inside of here. And this also contains backslashes, so we again need to put an at sign before this string. Next up, you are gonna create a full path to the file you wanna be duplicating by using combine method. And we are gonna put that full path inside a string. We are gonna name it source, and it's gonna be equal to path.combine directory and file. Then create a path to the file that you want to create. So we are gonna be creating copies in the same directory as the source file. And for the name of our duplicated file, we are gonna use the random number generator, which we have created right here. So string destination equals path dot combine. And we wanna put it inside the same directory. So directory and the name is going to be generator dot next because we want to get the next random number two parentheses we are calling a method dot to string because this needs to be converted to string and now just write file dot copy and you are almost good to go so file dot copy 
and the source file name is source and the destination file name is destination. Amazing. Now we just have to double click on properties in the solution explorer right here. So just double click on it and change the icon. It has to be in .ico format and I've already downloaded one for Chrome. So just press here, go to the download location and choose it. There is one more thing which we need to change and that is output type. We want to set it to Windows application like so. Because unless a Windows app has a UI, which our app doesn't, it doesn't show up in the taskbar down here. Like for example, Visual Studio shows up here. But we do not want our app showing up because it could alert our victim. And now is actually a good time to test our app. I'm gonna open our prank folder and as you can see, I have only one file in here and that is our file.zip. Now when I press on start or F5, so start, Google Chrome opens up because we are starting a process. And also when I look here, we have a randomly named file, which is the exact same size as our file.zip, which is totally cool. And you could obviously put some 500 megabyte file in here, so it's gonna have a greater impact. And when I change the output type to console application, you will be able to see for just a really, really brief moment that it shows up in the taskbar down here. So when I press on start and look closely, Yep, you could see it, even the console showed up and you don't want that. So that's why we changed this to Windows application. Now we are gonna build our prank app. So just press here and change it to release. Then go to build, build solution. Now right click on properties and choose open folder in file explorer. Go to bin, release. And there is our app. Normally you would copy this executable onto your USB drive and then quickly get it to your victim's PC and then set up folders on that PC so that it will all work. But because this is just a tutorial, I'm gonna add a shortcut to my folder. So I will create a shortcut right here. I'm going to copy it and paste it inside my prank folder here, duplicating files. As you can see, it's pretty much impossible to recognize that this is not a real Google Chrome. And when we start it, it slowly but surely duplicates our file. And in a few days, your victim is gonna be scratching his or her head, wondering where has all the free space gone? We can test it one more time. So prank folder containing three files now because I have tested it already and when I press on Chrome 2. It opens up Google Chrome and when we go to our prank folder, there are more files. I hope that this video helped you with pranking your friends and family. If so, give it a like and also share it. Subscribe to this channel if you want to get notified about my videos, pranks and serious tutorials alike. And be sure to hit the bell button if you don't want to miss anything. Leave a comment if you have any suggestions for me and also follow me on social media and see you in the next video.